In this video we will discuss about gate training and assistive devices. This is the last part of our course. In the previous videos we discussed about history of physiotherapy and medical terminologies, basics of electrotherapy and therapeutic exercises, physiotherapy management of common musculoskeletal disorders, bed mobility and transfer. Links of all these videos are mentioned in the description box. Let's come to our topic. Gait training. It is a method of locomotion involving the use of the two legs alternately to provide both support and propulsion. Gait cycle. A gait cycle is the sequence of events or movements during locomotion in which one foot contacts the ground to when that same foot again contacts the ground and involves propulsion of the center of gravity in the direction of motion. Classification of the gait cycle involves two main phases, stance phase and swing phase. The stance phase occupies 60% of the gait cycle while the swing phase occupies only 40% of it. A more detailed classification of gait recognizes six phases, heel strike, foot flat, mid stance, heel off, toe off, and mid swing. In order that a person can walk, the locomotion system must be able to accomplish four things. Number one, each leg, must be able to support the body weight without collapsing. Number two, balance must be maintained statically and dynamically during single leg stance. Number three, the swinging leg must be able to advance to a position where it can take over the supporting role. Number four, sufficient power must be provided to make the necessary limb movements and to advance the trunk. General causes of abnormal gait may include arthritis of the leg or foot joints, foot problems such as a callus, corn, ingrown toenail, wart, pain, skin sore, swelling, or spasm, broken bone, infection and injuries, leg length discrepancy, inflammation or swelling of the muscles, shin splints, shoe problems, tendinitis, brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves diseases and vision problems. Gait training is a type of physical therapy. It can help improve the ability to stand and walk. It may help to gain independence in walking, even if you need an adaptive device. Gait training can help in Strengthen your muscles and joints, improve your balance and posture, build your endurance, develop your muscle memory, retrain your legs for repetitive motion, lower your risk of falls, while increasing your mobility. Common types of gait abnormalities that may require gait training include Trendelenburg gait, high steppage gait, spastic gait, Antalgic gait, propulsive gait, scissors gait, waddling gait, ataxic or broad based gait, and magnetic gait. Gait training exercises These targeted exercises may help to improve in gait training. After lower extremity injury, you may need to work on regaining and maintaining normal range of motion in joints. Often after surgery, swelling may limit joint range of motion. Range of motion may also be limited by tight muscles or structures that occur after a period of immobilization following injury or surgery. Working to regain that motion may be part of the gait training exercise program. Exercises to improve lower extremity range may include ankle pumps, calf stretch, heel slides to improve knee range of motion, hamstring stretches and hip rotation stretches, 
strengthening exercise may be incorporated into gait training exercise program. If there is weakness in hip, knees, or ankles muscles, this may prevent the ability of walking safely. Exercises should be done slowly, and it is recommended to use light resistance and high repetitions for lower extremity gait training exercises. Exercises for lower extremity strengthening may include straight leg raises, quad sets and short arc quads, ankle strengthening with resistance bands, mini squats and step up exercises. Obstacle gait training. Here are some points to explain how to perform obstacle gait training. Set up 5 or 6 small obstacles in a row about 15 inches apart. Obstacles can be rolled up towels, athletic hurdles, or small stacks of books. Stand facing the obstacles, and step over one with one foot. Place the other foot, next to the first foot. Repeat walking over the obstacles with one foot. Then, turn around and step over the obstacles leading with the other foot first. When this becomes easy, step over the first obstacle, then step all the way over the next obstacle in the row. Be sure to lift your knee up high and lift your foot and ankle up towards your buttocks when taking steps. Repeat walking over the obstacles for 10 repetitions. Once obstacle stepping has become easy, when stepping forward over the hurdles, you can try stepping over sideways. This alteration to normal forward gait can help to move in different directions while walking. Here's how to perform side stepping gait exercises stand with obstacles to the side. Step one foot sideways over the first obstacle. Be sure to raise your knee up high. When placing the first foot down on the other side of the obstacle, be sure to leave enough room for the second foot to land. Lift the second foot up, high knee. Place the second foot next to the first foot. Repeat over all the obstacles. Retro walking is a toe-to-heel pattern. Backward walking seems to reset the neuromuscular system, challenging your lower extremity muscles and joints in specific ways that may improve the gait. Forward walking is a heel-to-toe motion. The benefits of backward walking may include improved hamstring flexibility, improved quadriceps activation, improved balance, improved coordination, improved walking speed and improved step length and stride length. Balance and proprioception training is an important component of gait training exercise program. Exercises that can help improve balance and proprioception may include single leg stance, single leg stance on an unsteady surface, single leg stance with eyes closed, tandem standing and walking. Parallel bars may be used to help with gait training, especially in the early stages when a patient is first learning or relearning to walk. They involve a person walking between two handrails to support themselves, often with the therapist, either helping to support the patient or physically moving the patient's legs. The gait belt is also utilized by the physical therapist in order to support the patient and to prevent them from falling or placing too much weight on the injured leg. Devices intended to help with mobility include wheelchairs, walkers, scooters, crutches, canes, and orthotic devices. Gait Patterns Next we will discuss about 2 point. 3-point and 4-point gait patterns. The selection of the proper gait pattern is dependent upon the patient's balance, strength, coordination, functional needs, and weight-bearing status. 
Two point gate pattern. The two point gate pattern requires the use of bilateral assistive gate devices. This pattern is faster than the four point gate. It is a gate in which the left foot and right crutch are advanced simultaneously, then the right foot and left crutch are moved forward. Three point gate pattern. This pattern is used when the patient is only able to bear full weight on one lower extremity. In three point gait, both crutches and the affected leg are advanced together, and then the normal leg is moved forward. Four point gait pattern A four point gait pattern is used when the patient requires maximum assistance with balance. It requires the use of bilateral assistive gait devices, canes or crutches. The pattern begins with the forward movement of one of the assistive gait devices and then the contralateral lower extremity, the other assistive gait device and finally the opposite lower extremity, for example, first move right crutch, then left foot, then left crutch and then the right foot. This is a slow gait pattern, but a stable one. I hope this video will be beneficial for you. Check out the community tab and evaluate yourself by answering the simple questions. Subscribe the YouTube channel and press bell icon.